Hi, this is your Samsung Bharati and we are here at Kupan Cloud and Econ in Atlanta and we have with us once again Sayam Parak, Head of Developer Relations at Victor Sir Sayam. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, thank you so much Swapnil for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Pleasure is all mine. Uh, talk a bit about what kind of announcement you folks made here at the show. So KubeCon, Cloud Native Con North America is always big and uh, we always want to do something uh, interesting over here. And uh, we have worked for over one year with specific sections of vCluster that we released. And we have combined them and launched a reference architecture and a partnership with NVIDIA on their DGX. So DGX is basically kind of the uh, GPU supercomputer like I mean, not a supercomputer, but uh, the GPU infrastructure. If anybody wants, they can buy DGX machines. And now vCluster can run on those DGX machines and power them up in an autonomous way so that you can get the Kubernetes out of the box experience with vCluster on DGX. So great uh, partnerships. There's a, there are reference architectures that people can refer to with respect to private nodes, auto nodes, and vNode for the complete isolation. Who's going to be the target audience for this partnership? So the target audience would be uh, the organizations who want their AI infrastructure built. So AI infrastructure is the next big thing or it's the big thing that is happening right now. Everyone wants their data locally to them. Everyone wants the data secure and they want to inference their data and keep their internal documents, internal code uh, within their own infrastructure and still use those LLM capabilities. And that is where AI infrastructure will play a big role. And NVIDIA has been the number one provider in those GPUs that can power those AI workflows. And Kubernetes layer is uh, obviously the most stable layer out there. And vCluster makes it all possible with that hardware and Kubernetes layer on top of the NVIDIA infrastructure. And you folks also, uh, you know, I've been talking to you and Lucas, of course, tenancy and AI has become, you know, a huge topic at vCluster. You folks also, of course, launched the infrastructure tenancy platform for AI, you know, in part of this partnership. Uh, talk about it. And also, if you can talk about, because you folks have built a lot of technology like private nodes, auto nodes, and a lot of other things are there. What are the building blocks of this platform? So, um, what we want to do, and, and as a community person myself, we want to capture the entire multi-tenancy spectrum space. So, tenancy, the entire tenancy spectrum is now being covered by vCluster. That was the goal for 2025 and uh, we were able to achieve that with the set of releases that we have done. Like you mentioned, uh, previously vCluster was only uh, shared nodes. So you can have the, you have the control plane and in that control plane, when you create a vCluster create demo, it spins up a stateful set. And when you create workloads, it still uses the host infrastructure. But now with the private node concept, what you can do is hosted control plane. So you can have the control plane pod still running on the host cluster, but when you join, you can actually join the physical nodes which are outside of the host cluster to those virtual clusters. Now this brings complete isolation, those who want maximum security and a newer tenancy uh, spectrum layer that if you want the hosted control plane concept. And then we had auto nodes, Carpenter baked in, nobody is able to do that. So vCluster is the only solution out there that provides Carpenter for bare metal or Carpenter for any Kubernetes cluster out there. Can you also talk about when it comes to GPU uh, utilization, you know, uh, it becomes a big, you know, utilization becomes a big barrier. How security can be a big issue and that's where the, you know, tenancy isolation comes up again. Can you talk about how is vCluster solving that problem? That's a very excellent question. So let's say you have a bare metal setup. In the bare metal setup, you have a few CPU nodes and you have few GPU nodes. Now, traditionally, you will have various teams working and they would want their own Kubernetes clusters. So, and minimum, you need three to four nodes for your Kubernetes cluster. So bare metal capacity is limited and you can't create that many Kubernetes cluster. So what we say is, combine everything, create a single Kubernetes cluster from your bare metal hardware with CPUs and GPUs, and then create virtual clusters and give that to your teams. Now, with the concept of private nodes and auto nodes, what you can do is you can have one cluster and then a small cluster. And then in that, you can have a virtual cluster control plane and enable auto nodes. Now, what it will do is it will, it will give you maximum security plus it will, since the Carpenter integration is there for the bare metal as well, so it will use the free node for the particular virtual cluster and if it's not being used, it will free that node out. 
So that's how the concept would really work and GP utilization will be the maximum in, in the bare metal kind of scenario. On top of that, if you even need more security, like you don't want privileged pod kind of access, then you can go for vNode. So with the, with the whole data center would look like, like one cluster, virtual nodes, virtual clusters inside vNodes and uh, with auto node enabled. Of course, everybody is on AI bandwagon, everybody is on... Uh, but you know, just bringing another Kubernetes cluster to a GPU is it, it, not solving a lot of problems. So how is vCluster kind of solving that problem? You know, you did touch upon that, you know, generally, but now you have an official partnership. How is it further solving that problem? That is not just another Kubernetes cluster that you are trying to build a Frankenstein monster there. Yes, so the interesting thing is uh, when we talk about bare metal infrastructure, when we talk about GPUs, the GPU architectures that you get on the cloud and that you get uh, when you buy directly from the NVIDIA, they are somewhat different in terms of the networking layers, in terms of how it works. So setting up those NVIDIA drivers and making sure the GPUs are available to be consumed by the pods is also challenging. And second thing is the schedulers. The regular community schedule is not that efficient in terms of the batch workloads or uh, gang scheduling. So you need something like Chi Scheduler or you might go for Run AI's own, uh, 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 NVIDIA's own Run AI that they acquired recently. So that kind of thing can natively work when you are using vCluster. So you can use vCluster, then you can int easily integrate Chi Scheduler. And with the DGX thing, we are making sure that everything pieces together, like you mentioned, building blocks, coming together and making sure it works. And it's not just a Kubernetes cluster, but it's a Kubernetes cluster that can actually run and scale your AI workloads. Since morning, a lot of my discussions are around AI SRE, you know, most of it. Uh, and as uh, more and more, you know, adoption of, you know, AI SRE is growing, what role do you see of G GPU infrastructure there in that space? I think um, this year we have all seen like AI SRE, AI agents, MCP, all of these terms coming up. People are crazy building these AI agents, Cajun project, a lot of CNCF projects are coming up in this. The thing that is constantly growing and exponentially is the need and demand for GPUs, which is where we are seeing AI farms being built in US and other countries. We are also uh, seeing there are a lot of companies who are uh, not NVIDIA, but other companies who are actually creating their own interesting architectures for better inferencing. So I think two key areas I see a lot of innovation and a lot of uh, my interesting work is the inferencing space. Like, how do we make sure that the inferencing, the KV caching, page detention, all these things are working together and working very nicely with Kubernetes. So we saw 1.34 DRA got, uh, you know, uh, GA, DRA, Dynamic Resource Allocation went GA. Uh, but we need to see how natively LLMs can help here and build those uh, troubleshooting mechanisms easy with uh, inside the Kubernetes cluster. So that's very interesting, like AI, AI SRE is there, I have been hearing it about since past KubeCon, but nobody is able to get it right. Like people are trying that, but it's not, it's not there yet. But yes, I think it is providing enough value to get those troubleshooting metrics and give you the results out there. But I think this, this space is really interesting and AI, that's why I said previously as well, AI infrastructure is a really hot space and uh, glad that vCluster is directly not building AS solutions, but sitting on the infrastructure layer that powers those AS solutions. When you joined vCluster back in the those loft lab, uh, you came from outside, you saw a lot of exciting that happened. How have you seen vCluster labs grown from when you joined till where we are sitting now today? So I have seen massive uh, growth in terms of the features that we have launched, especially this year. So last year when I joined, it was more focused on polishing some of the things. But this year it has been focused on creating new set of features. Like we created a new spectrum tenancy model itself, a tenancy, a new way of tenancy. V cluster private nodes, like we were not, you were not able to do private nodes with V cluster, but now you can. Uh, do that. You were not able to do auto nodes. You were not, and 
one of the things that I forgot to mention with the latest release uh, that we have is the Netris integration, which is the uh, another uh, another cool thing. And prior to that was standalone V cluster. So standalone V cluster is a concept. Uh, so I, we always talk about like host cluster and on top of host cluster, you create virtual cluster. But now V cluster standalone can be the host cluster. So V cluster standalone becomes the host cluster. And on top of that, you create the virtual clusters. So that's that's good because this entire stack now can power the DGX machines. This entire stack can become your private AI infrastructure. So with my role, I have seen like I have done a lot of AI. There's a book signing that I'm doing on the AI ready platforms that I wrote with Daniel from LearnCube. So I learned a lot about the GPU architectures, GPUs, how they are working. Uh, how they are different, like L40s, A100s, H100s, how they are different. Some supports the multi-instance GPUs, some do not support the multi-instance GPUs. And uh, how the Kubernetes integration is not, it, it doesn't just work. There is a lot of work that needs to be done to make it available for these spots. And vCluster has gone all in with different tenancy spectrum modes to complete that entire tenancy spectrum. So. I think it was early 2025 when we first saw the tenancy spectrum from uh, soft multi-tenancy to hard multi-tenancy and slowly we covered the entire spectrum with the number of features that, that we have uh, lost. Sayam, thank you so much for joining me today and walk us through this NVIDIA partnership and also the evolution of Vitla. So thank you so much for your time today and I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Thank you so much Swapnil for having me. It's always... Uh, Pleasure to meet you in different continents and countries. Likewise, thank you.